Lothar, let me tell you what some people have told me, that you need consciousness to understand quantum physics, that quantum physics is based on an, a, an observer making a measurement. Quantum physics is needed to explain the unique nature of consciousness, how we feel things. And therefore, consciousness becomes the fundamental reality. And so the conclusion of all of that is then then consciousness not be, not, is not a derivative of evolution and matter, but rather consciousness sits at the foundation of reality and causes all the matter and forces of the universe. What say you? The claim that consciousness creates reality, yes. I think is wrong. Now, it has a, a foundation in some phenomena, and I think it arose in the following way. When you pursue the nature of matter to smaller and smaller particles, mm. yeah, you end up with elementary particles, all of a sudden matter is lost. How is it lost? Because when, when a particle is on its own, that means it doesn't interact with anything in a vacuum. Mm. An electron in a vacuum, you know, we, in, in my research we work with electron refraction, we build an electron refraction instrument, when the electrons went into that instrument, they became waves. What kind of waves? These waves are described by Schrödinger's wave mechanics. These waves they are mathematical forms. They don't have units of matter or energy. They are just forms, information. They spread out. So first you had a particle, then you have this wave, it is spread out. You can't see these waves. These waves they form a non-empirical realm. Because when you interact to take a look, the wave is destroyed mm -hmm. and a particle okay. comes out. So, how does that happen? Well, you have to understand, the pioneers, they, they were overwhelmed by this. They said, well, maybe it is because you need consciousness that makes something real. Yes, exactly. First of all, there's always something real, but an invisible reality. Those forms exist. Secondly, you don't need consciousness. All you need is an interaction of the wave with its environment. Because you might say, okay, if particles, molecules spontaneously become waves, how come my body exists? How come? The... Yeah. Because the, all these atoms interact with each other. They keep each other honest. One wants to go, psh, the other one get it back. Yeah, and, and if there was no consciousness around, they would still do the same thing. <laughs> exactly. There, there is no consciousness in here that keeps them. Interaction with the environment creates empirical reality out of a non-empirical form. Okay. An importance of these forms is they are non-empirical. We have to think there is a background of the world, of the whole universe that is a realm of forms, everything visible comes out of these, actualizes out of them. The forms, they have wave-like potentials. Uh, we don't really know what they are because they're non-empirical, but the idea is the whole background of the universe is a wholeness, where all these forms hang together like the thoughts in your mind. Well, yeah, and that's why some people say, because this is so powerful and so strange, that that's what is the real reality that generated what we, what we think is matter. Uh, well, okay. So, you know, you also had another point, and that is, it does, is that the source of consciousness? I think that these forms can actualize in the visible world as material structures and they actualize in our minds as thoughts. Why can we understand the empirical world? Because the thoughts and the empirical order have the same source, a cosmic background out of which all of this is coming. The, that seems to argue that consciousness or something non-material, non-empirical, you can't sense it, is the cause of everything. Yes. You said you don't agree with that. Wait. Non-material, non-empirical, yes. Um, consciousness, well, the forms hang together. There may be a cosmic consciousness, 
but it doesn't create the empirical world. That, I, that's my issue. There is a cosmic consciousness, but it doesn't create the empirical world. But the empirical world is an emanation out of this realm of forms. So the realm of forms is different than consciousness. Okay, the question of the role of consciousness is complex. Um, when you have a particle in a vacuum become a non-material wave, and when somehow a particle comes out of this again, you do not need consciousness to make this happen. That is often meant when people talk about consciousness created reality. Yeah. Because all that has to happen is that this wave, which was a particle, interacts with something in its environment. And immediately. And the particle comes out. It doesn't need a human mind. Okay. So in that sense, consciousness has nothing to do with the basis of physics. However, when you have a particle and it becomes a wave, you can say, what kind of wave is that? Well, the wave is a pattern of information. Information is normally for a mind. There's a pattern of information in a, in a cosmic dimension. Could that mean there is a cosmic mind? And so, yes, in that sense you can say there is a background of the world that is a consciousness. And in, we can only suspect in all likelihood it creates a visible world. But, you know, you have to distinguish this from the view that human consciousness is needed. No, it is not needed. Like the particles in, this, in all material things, they stay particles. They may, for a short time, become waves, and then the others get them back yeah. because they interact. And no human consciousness involved. No human consciousness involved. No. We do not need consciousness uh, to create real things. Uh, the, the particles in here, they, they don't need consciousness, they stay particles. At the same time, that the background of the universe is mind-like, and that means it is possible that it is a consciousness, that we cannot exclude. And if it is, then it will also appear in our mind and create the empirical world.